Welcome, this is Rufamonger, and this is my beginner's guide to multiverses. So in multiverses, it's a pretty jam-packed game. There's a lot of things going on. So everything in this video will be timestamped for your ease of use. So skip ahead to whatever makes sense for you. And if you do skip ahead, leave a like, please. That'd be very much appreciated. But yeah, I'm going to run over basically all the aspects of how multiverses works. From the easy stuff to more advanced stuff and more points in between. And that all said, hey, let's get right to it and let's talk about the basics. So now talking about the absolute basics here, let's start with just the buttons. The game has two core attack buttons, your regular attack and your special attack. And both buttons, you can do a regular attack, forward regular attack, down regular attack, up regular attack, and much the same here. Uh, regular special, forward special, down special, and up special. And they're different for every character, everyone does different things. And also in the air, much the same, you can do a neutral attack, down attack, side attack, up attack, and much the same for the specials, right? So the buttons are universal for the characters. However, character to character, things can definitely change quite a bit. Say Superman here, his neutral normal attack, big old punch, right? And he can also hold it. And when he holds it, it does more damage. And also you can see uh, the glowing effect. He's armored while doing it. We'll talk more about status effects later in the video as well, right? So that's all right. Now let's try someone completely different. All right, so now we're the Iron Giant. And Iron Giant's neutral attack, he takes a big old bite out of some metal. And you might notice he glows purple while doing it. And his can also be held, FYI. The purple means it's armor breaking property. So certain moves have specific properties. So Superman's neutral attack was armored and Iron Giant's is armor breaking. So some pretty key differences. Also, when you hit, you have a chance to connect and generate some resource for the character. So everyone's stuff is different. The controls are the same across the cast, yes, but everyone's movesets are wildly different from one another. Now, some more universal rules. We'll use Iron Giant while we got him here for a second. Normally, normally everyone can double jump. Iron Giant can't, but he has thrusters. So he can like have like soft flight basically, but he can't double jump. And of course, jumping a very big part of the game, all sorts of stuff for movement, gives you access to all your aerial normals, just important across the board. And another universal trait is the dodge. So you can set this to whatever button you want. Uh, on default, on pad, it's R2. But the dodge is your only real form of defense in this game. And we'll talk more about that later, I guess, in the video. But it's a fully invincible move. While you're dodging, you cannot be hit, which is great because there's no blocking in this game, right? So this is how you get around. Also, it's tied to a lot of stuff. Like if you dodge and then jump, you get a much better jump than you normally would. You can dodge and then cancel the dodge attack to have like an invincible startup attack. So there's a lot of nuance to it. But at the base level, it is your defensive move. It is your get out of dodge, I don't wanna be here. Now, one of the things here is you can also just dodge in place. You don't have to dodge in a direction. So if you don't wanna give up ground while having some invincibility, that's good. And now, you might notice the more I dodge, that blue bar is going down. So dodge is basically this. You're invincible for the duration. That's great. But the more you dodge, the less and less invincible it gets. So basically it's the game's way to penalize you if you're dodging just a little too much. And if you run out, it takes a while to get going. Now you can hit the enemy to help build it back up, that kind of stuff. But just keep in mind, it's good. You want to use it. And some characters, it's key for mobility. Like Superman. Superman, he doesn't walk forward as fast as a lot of the rest of the cast, right? But his dodge is lightning quick. So just for like the movement, Superman's dodge is very good. Also, lets him go right into some of his aerial attacks. And he has very strong aerial attacks, FYI. So for Superman, dodge is not only just a tool to defend yourself. It's also a burst of speed to help get in. So that's a little different character to character. Some people, they want to use it more that way. Some people, they want to use it less that way. But suffice to say, there's a reason this has a meter. Because this is one of your most important things you can do regardless of whatever character you are. Now, just to talk more about movement in general. Whenever you're in the air, you can simply hold down and just fall down faster. This in and of itself, like just for general movement, is good. Someone like Jake, it's actually a big part of his offense. Jake, his jump neutral attack, he does this like big balloon, right? But the thing is, if you just jump and do it, 
Like, you might go over the enemy's head or whatever, but what you want to do is jump and immediately fast fall. And what happens is you basically fall to the ground as possible, uh, as rather as fast as possible while doing it, and just makes the move like a lot more deadly because it just expands outwards quite a bit. So you can just kind of bully with it, right? You can be very sloppy with this move thanks to fast fall. It just has a giant hitbox. But just jumping and doing it, not as good. But jump and fast fall and doing it is very good. And you can definitely just bop people with it. So keep in mind, it's good for movement fast fall, but it's also good just to help your offense depending on your character. Now also a general rule, you're gonna be in the air a lot in this game. That's just how this works, right? You're gonna be in the air just a lot. You're allowed to jump twice in the air, barring a couple exceptions like Iron Giant as we went over, right? You're allowed to dodge twice in the air. You can do two special moves in the air, but that's it. It's basically a rule two. Two dodges, two jumps, two specials. That's it. You cannot exceed those. Now, basic attacks like regular attacks, that you can just do forever. Like there's no stopping it. You can do unlimited of those, but you're allowed basically two of every action besides a regular basic attack in the air. So if you're airborne for a little too long, you will start running out of options. So it behooves you to get your feet back on the ground quick before you leap off into the air again. Now, just so you know, if you're on the ledge, touching the ledge refreshes these options. So if you wanna go for it, go for it. But keep in mind, the longer you're on the ledge without touching the ground properly, as you see their wall fatigue, like you're gonna start losing stamina. Like it's a big deal. Uh, you are allowed to kind of hang on the ledge just a bit but you gotta get your feet back on the stage after a while because you'll just start sliding more and more and more and eventually you start gonna start draining that stamina. So you're not allowed to hog the edge forever, basically. Now, some more basic concepts if you already know how platform fighters work, but just to make sure we cover all of our bases here, we're here to help everyone, right? We're gonna talk about a lot of the core basics of platform fighting that apply to multiverses. So if you know this stuff, check the timestamps, Feel free to skip ahead, I suppose. But for one, let's just talk basic damage. Obviously you hit the enemy, does damage. Simple as simple could be, right? And for a lot of characters that have moves that can be charged, if you charge it, it'll do even more damage. That's great. Now the thing is this, so say Shaggy here is at 0% and I bonk him. Okay, sure, right? Say I do the full charge version. Okay, you got a good bonk there. But the thing in this game, and many other platform fighters is, the more damage you have, the more and more further you will go flying. So now you can see Shaggy's at 100 damage. And now let's go for that big wallop again here. And oh my lord, you see that? See how far he went flying? So the more uh, health you have taken in damage, the further and further and further you're gonna go on the big hits. Like on any hit, yes. But the big hits get like more and more and more deadly. And you can get to that point when you're just, not gonna be able to survive the hit no matter what. You're just gonna go flying, and that's all she wrote. Certain characters are better at this than other characters. Some people, depending on their big hits, it can take a couple wallops before you can like really crank them out of the stage. But for some people, it's easier. For Harley, you know, she's not the Iron Giant, right? Her big swings won't do as much as like the big character swings, but eventually she will get you, regardless of your health. It's just a matter of time. But when she does get you, you're gone. Now, just to talk ring outs and stocks. This is not a normal fighting game. There's no normal health bar. As long as the enemy's on the stage, they'll be here forever. Even if it says like 250 damage, they will be here until you knock them out, right? You either gotta knock them at the top of the stage or the side of the stage or down at the bottom. Doesn't particularly matter how you do it, but as long as you can get them out of the stage, that takes a stock. Now, there's multiple modes in this game. Actually, the 2v2 mode is considered the default. So in 2v2, it takes four stocks, four ring outs to win, just FYI. And it certainly helps to deal a lot of damage, but you don't have to. But by hook or by crook, no matter how much or how little health the enemy has, if you can just kind of spike them, they're done, right? Doesn't matter if it's zero health, 100 health, 1000 health, doesn't matter how much damage they've taken. The only goal is to get them off the stage. No matter how you do it, that's how you win. Now to talk about a bit of a hidden stat, I guess you could call, wait. Every character weighs different. So I'm picking a uh, pretty disparate uh, characters here, Iron Giant and Arya Stark. But uh, basically the heavier the character is, the less they go flying when they're hit. Uh, you can consider this more effective health, if you will. 
So for Iron Giant, we're going to do up attack and we'll do the full charge version. All right, he goes up there, right? But he's not quite ringed out. But Arya Stark, she's done. She's all the way done, right? They obviously both have the same uh, health values here. They're both at 140, but one will not get ringed out and one will. So keep that in mind, depending on the characters you're playing. Uh, the weight actually matters a lot. Your weight is effectively your level of survivability. Now, it's not really something they show in-game, but uh, for the most part, you can get a decent idea. Obviously, the Iron Giant is heavier than Arya Stark, and you can kind of go from there. Bigger characters generally are going to have more weight. Just to showcase what a deal this is here, so once again, Arya Stark just goes flying. She's done at 140. One hit. Iron Giant? All right. Yeah, he survived. He's good. Let's try that again. No, he's still here. Let's try that again. Nah, he's still good. Let's try that again. Nah, he's still good. So, like, the thing I'm trying to uh, get across to you here is... It takes a while, right? It took a fair bit more hits just to uh, get Iron Giant out of the ring. So, weight is good. You want your character to weigh more. Now, another thing to talk about is chargeable moves. Most characters have at least one move they can charge. Some characters have more, some characters have less, but the basic is, you know, I do a thing, and like say here, that does four. If I do the charge version, does 10, right? So charge does more damage if you charge. If you do partial charge, that does eight, right? So you'll still have a reward for partial charge. Uh, and certain characters, uh, if they charge, they might get new properties. Let's use Wonder Woman example here. So forward special is a big old shield bonk, right? And you see here at the very, very tailor end of it, the armor icon shows up. But if we hold the button here, we actually stay in the stance. So we can just absorb hits. Much the same here, down attack. It's like this garbage nothing attack, right? But if I were to hold it, okay, now it becomes something a little bit more real, right? And also at the end of the attack, she's also armored. Wonder Woman and armor is a big thing. For Wonder Woman 2, specifically, down in uh, normal attack, she has a special bar she can build up here when she blocks projectiles with her shields or just any sort of uh, armor. And when she does, then all of a sudden the attack gets much bigger and better, right? So that's good. Someone like Rhyndog, who's a little bit more like his owner himself, uh, just neutral special here, toss a little fireball. But if you were to hold it, and becomes, well, a much bigger fireball, right? And he can do this with many of his attacks here. So it's just a big part of the character. Every character has some amount of charge, and for some, charge gives special properties, so check it out character to character. Some moves are also aimable. Like Iron Giant here, this is up special. As you can see, I just can't hit him. Like, I can't hit Steven Universe at all. But if I were to hold down while doing it, all of a sudden, the arc changes. And depending on how you hold your analog stick, basically during this move, he will try to arc the move appropriately to how you aim your analog stick. So here, nothing, but now holding down, I totally can't hit him. So keep that in mind. Some moves are aimable. Let's give you a very strong example. So Jake, Jake, just any of his side regular attacks. It's a big old wallop, right? And it is a charge move as well, and it has a sweet spot. So you're gonna be aiming at this a lot, right? Like it is outside the range of most characters' effective attacks. So he can hit you and you can't hit him, right? But the thing is, you know, well, it's a little predictable, right? It goes in a straight line. I'll just be above it or be below it, whatever. But you can totally aim this bad boy. Any point. Uh, this is easier if you're on a controller that has analog versus, say, like a digital input, like a keyboard or a hitbox or something, because it's a true analog aiming. Like, it's not just up, up, forward, forward, down, forward. Like, whatever angle you want to aim it at is the angle it will connect in. So, for someone like Jake, this is a massive part of his moveset. Because this lets him have the range other characters can't have. So, aiming this move is a big deal. And lots of characters have aimable moves. So, mess around with the cast, see what you can aim and what you can't aim. Now, let's talk status effects. There's a lot. A lot of positive ones and a lot of negative ones. So, you've already seen here armor, right? If you glow yellow, you'll see the shield. You can basically tank hits. That's easy enough. Now, Superman. Superman, he can inflict the freeze mechanic. So if you build 15 stacks of freeze, well, you're frozen. And it's just like Sub-Zero Mortal Kombat. When you're frozen, you're frozen. You cannot do anything. It is literally a guaranteed free hit for Superman 
or his partner. So you don't want to get frozen. And uh, Superman can say team up with Velma, who can also freeze, to freeze you double as fast. So there's like viable team building strategies there. So froze, simple enough. Also, flame. So uh, his laser eyes put a flame debuff on you. It's uh, not too big, not too pronounced, but you take a few more points of damage. Now let's take something a bit more big. Iron Giant. Not only will he set you on fire, he can create like flame pools that are just active DOTs. Like if you're in the flame pool, you're going to be taking damage. So for him, this is a bigger part of his game plan because you'll get the initial burn on you and then literally turns the stage to lava, right? Part of the stage is now Flora's Lava. This is somewhere you don't want to be. Even if he doesn't necessarily connect with the move fully, if he can somehow like get you into it, you will start burning. So that is something to watch out for. Other things that are debuffs are stuff like Weakened. And Weakened, pretty self-explanatory. When Weakened stacks are on you, and you can put multiple stacks on, by the way, basically, you do less damage. Easy enough. Other Another fun one, there's Invisibility. So in this case, Batman, ooh, where, oh, where, oh, there he is. Well, there he is, right? But he's invisible inside the cloud. So there's a lot of little status effects throughout the game. It really changes character to character. Some characters are all about ice, some are all about fire, some are all about their various little gimmicks. Like Arya Stark. Arya Stark has the face buff, where if she can steal your face, well then things get a little rotten for you because she can like literally turn into you like Shang Tsung style and do moves to you that are your moves and other fun things like stuns and all that kind of stuff, right? So a lot of characters have their own unique resource on top of like just the universal buffs and debuffs. They can apply stuff that is very specific to their own character. And finally, in this little section here, just stages. Stages matter a lot. Stages are wildly different in this game. So this stage that you see here is kind of like the platform fighter classic, the one big bottom lane here and three platforms. If you've seen any of these kind of games, you've seen this one to death. But then there's stuff like the Scooby-Doo stage, the Haunted Mansion. So this stage has walls. Like, I literally can't go and force myself to get ringed out. It's not happening. At the beginning of the stage, there is exactly one opening. It's the very top of the stage and only in the middle. That is the only place to get ringed out. But as the stages keep going on, the fight, you know, obviously will go to the sides here. And then all of a sudden, you see here, like kind of broke off the wall there. And eventually, if you keep hitting your enemy, you can actually destroy the wall. And then you can start getting ring outs. Stuff like these platforms over the course of the match, they go up and down, right? So what solid ground one second might be a pit you die from later on in the match. The Bat Cave. So it's a uh, one flat arena and also has like two side stages here, these little Batmobiles, which act as walls. You can bounce off them, all that kind of stuff. And environmental effects will happen in the stage. Like there'll be like smoke puffs coming from here that can make people invisible. Uh, swarms of bats will kind of like mess with your jump arcs. So the stage matters a lot. And over the course of this game's life, I'm sure there'll be more stages and just the stages will mess around with you. Certain characters will like certain stages more. I can tell you this, like right now, Iron Giant, who is new as of this build of the game, Stages that are a bit more constrained, like this stage, he does not like these stages. Because he's just so big, right? He gets smacked around very easily. Stages that are very open, those stages favor him. He does much better on those stages. You can almost say, like, his tier, like how strong this character is, is more dependent on the stage he's on than the character just itself. The more freedom he has to move, the better he is. The more he's constricted, the worse off he is, right? So stages matter a lot. Now, to talk defense in this game, there's um, there's no two bones about it. This game is very savage when it comes to offense, because there's no block. There's also no throw. Well, some characters have what are effectively throws, but there's no universal throw, right? So how do I defend myself if I get hit? Just don't be in the way. Just to use some Marvel versus Capcom parlance, just don't get hit. That's really all there is to it. If I'm going to hit you and you're just there, you're getting hit. End of story. Now, there's lots of ways to not get hit, right? Like, uh, you can use your dodge. That's invincible. Lots of characters have the armor property where they can just tank through hits or otherwise be invincible or otherwise just not get hit, right? But the basic rule is this. If you're in the way and something's coming that way, you're hit. That's all there is to it. So your spacing needs to be immaculate. There's no shield to save you. There's like, oh, panic mode, shield, and just wait something out. Not going to happen. 
Your spacing has to be on point. That's what the real big deal about this game is. Uh, it's both, uh, I guess, more simplistic in a way, right? Because there's less options. But because there's less options, it's also much more savage. You have to have good spacing. You have to have good wherewithal, or you're going to get blown up in this game. Simple as that. Now, the characters themselves, you might notice they come with tags. Like Shaggy is a bruiser hybrid. Wonder Woman's a tank. Batman's a bruiser, Superman's a tank, and so on. You get some more unique ones like Steven Universe is a support. Finn is an assassin. So they actually do mean some things depending on the character, but they're just generally rules. Assassins generally don't have great defense, but they're offensive monsters. They're blenders, basically, right? Supports, either they directly help the teammate by buffing them. Someone like Steven Universe is a good example of that. Or Velma has all sorts of gimmicks to help out the team. Someone like Bugs Bunny. He's a mage. He has a lot more projectiles, a lot more screen presence. That's generally what the mage archetype means. So generally speaking, it's just an idea to help you out. Like tanks usually have a lot of armor as well. Now, some of the things where it does matter a lot more are the assassin characters. To pay off their like hyper offense, they do got to pay a penalty. So uh, assassin's characters have the glass cannon trait. So they take an additional 14% damage from basically everything, right? So if a move did 100 damage, not that there really is a move that does 100 damage, but it would do 114. So it does add up over the course of the fight. You will take more damage overall. The other archetypes are just basically rough suggestions of how they play, but assassins, they do take more damage. So just watch out for that. Now combos. Combos are a big part of any fighting game. Maybe they're not as flashy in platform fighters as say like, you know, Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter, but they're still there. They're still important. So as you see here, we got our combo filler on here. You can just see, okay, Three hit combo and shows how much damage it is, all that kind of stuff. A lot of characters, they have basic attacks that just kind of combo naturally. Like Iron Giant, just forward an attack. And then if you see the hits, you hit forward attack again and gets a big butt slam. That's a natural combo. That's easy. Now, some notes about combos, though. Now, keep in mind when you're testing combos, you want your opponent to be set to dodge. So that way, if there's any kind of gap at all, they will just dodge out immediately. So it lets you know if your combo is true or not. Because you could basically trick yourself, right? If the bot set the default and it all connects, oh, that looks like a real combo. But if you have the bot set the dodge, then they'll dodge out as soon as possible. And then you know if it's really real or not. And trust me, you will want to dodge out of combos because if they drop it, you get out of jail. And, you know, if they don't, for the most part, you know, you take your hits and there's very little penalty, right? So just keep that in mind. So once again, combo structure. Like, I can go for the butt slam, sure, the follow-up. But why? If I hit them kind of deep, I can go for the grab instead and I get more follow-up. I can just get more damage, right? In fact, I can just kind of loop back into it. There we go, right? Better combo, more damage. Now, here's the thing. Depending on the enemy's health, once again, the more damage they take, the further and further they get knocked back, right? Certain combos can work at low health, but they will not work at high damage. So that same example here, if we just kind of rough up Shaggy a little bit more, that same basic combo we had here, just, it's not gonna work anymore. Like the, it's not much, but just the extra movement back from getting hit is basically enough to knock him out. Now, look at this too. At this point here, this high damage, even the basic hit is no longer a natural combo. He can mash out right away. So the higher your damage is, the more susceptible you are to like, you know, the big hit, like the big mammoth slammer, right? But the less combos will actually work on you. So keep that in mind. Practical combos are great against low health characters, but against characters with higher damage, you want to start going for the big swings to get the knockout. Okay, so now let's do some basic combo theory. The thing is many moves, not all moves, but many moves, you can either jump cancel or dodge cancel. So Harley Quinn has her three hitting thing, just forward attack, 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 right? Kind of basic, fine. So if you want to do it by itself, it is a natural combo, right? Like it's not like big or sexy or whatever, but it is a natural combo. But the thing is that's not the optimal combo. On the second hit, we can actually jump cancel. Or conversely, we could dodge cancel, right? So that helps out a lot. So let's try a combo from that. Since we know we can combo the second hit in just about anything, right? We'll do the first two hits and then combo into down attack attack. There you go, that's a natural combo, right? 
not very sexy, but it does more damage than the normal three hits, right? So we can confirm from there. We got the hits. Okay, let's go and get a little bit more damage. That's like layer one. Now let's get a bit more advanced. So remember how I said we could jump cancel, right? And sure enough, we can. So we're going to jump cancel and then go for Harley's down and attack. This guy right here kind of shoots her gun downwards. So there we go. We got our hits. And once again, if we're too slow, the bot will just dodge out of the way. So we know if it connects, it's a true combo. So from there, okay, let's try something different. Let's go for a big old wallop. All right, there we go. So even better yet. But one of the things we can do also is go into uh, from the down gun shot into the up gun shot. So let's try that out. Oh, there you go. So we did down gun shot, up gun shot, landed, and then bonked him with the bat. And that's the beginnings of a basic combo. And once again, you can hit confirm this. You can just go for the first two hits. And if you get it, well, then you can just start confirming and going into the combo from there. Oh, okay, I got my hit. And then we bonked him, right? So I can easily hit confirm and get the combos from there. Now, once again, too, keep in mind, we talk about the health, right? So when the health starts getting higher and higher, this basic combo will stop working. Things just get like very difficult because the basic hits kind of blow them back quite a bit. So it's much more difficult to kind of like hit in front of the jump and extreme uh, damages. Like this isn't even a combo anymore, right? So that's a thing. But once again, it's character to character, right? So at low health, this is like a nothing combo. Like it gets damaged, sure. At higher health, like that's a big spike, potentially a kill. So watch out, it's really good. Now that's Harley Quinn. I just wanna show you a couple other characters, basic combo examples. So Superman, a good example here of a combo starter would be jumping forward and attack, this guy here. Uh, because of, once again, we talked about earlier in the video, how his dodge more so than most other characters helps his movement. So you can kind of just do quick dash forward punches like that. And you might also notice here, the enemy kind of has to hit the ground first before they're uh, gonna recover. Once again, they're set to dodge as fast as they possibly can. But uh, at lower health values, they have to ground bounce first before they can dodge. So let's use and abuse that. So we'll get our hit in and we'll just keep attacking. You can either use air normal or you can kind of land and uh, get your straight punch in. That's a natural combo either way, that's basic. Now let's try to get a bit more advanced. So there you go. So we dodged in, use our dodge and cancel into a jump, which gives us more momentum, right? So we can kind of quickly attack like that and use that, it has the bounce. We follow it up here. We did two basic attacks, canceled that into the up attack and then basically canceled that and followed up into another aerial follow-up. So as long as you can chain all these cancels together and once again, character to character is a little different. You can make up whatever you want as long as the health isn't too high up. Some can be really basic, but really good. You know, like Jake, just one basic forward and attack. That's it. Which, uh, like many characters, but not all characters, is jump cancelable. Which you will use to your benefit, because then you're going skateboarding. There you go. Mathematical, and they're on fire. If you manage to get uh, three skateboards in a row, it'll play a flame debuff to the enemy. And it's pretty easy, because once you get the first, it just kind of ground bounces them over and over, so it'll just launch them back into your trajectory. Because his basic attack, as we talked about Superman, right? It kind of forces that knockdown. That little just ground bounce that they have to take. So if you can just kind of do that and then force your way here, and if you believe in it, just jump cancel it right away, and then just go for it. So for the most part, the general rule is you get better combos when they're lower health, and not so much when they're higher health. Although, depending on the character, depending on the situation, certain combos only appear when the damage is higher and the bounces and all that kind of stuff are higher. So play around with it for yourself. But that is the basics of combo structure in this game. Now, another important concept of this game is traits. So every character, they have up to four traits they can pick here. And how this works is you have three universal traits. They can be anything. They come in offense, defense, and utility categories, and they do things like, hey, 
do more damage, reduce cooldowns, maybe get a bonus if a certain situation happens. Some have additional bonuses or just stack up on their original bonus if you and your partner in a 2v2 situation pick the same perk. But generally, they come in like small, just ways to like kit out your character. The big ones, though, you see here, the three small ones and a big one, right? The big ones are character specific. The ones that go in these three slots are universal. But the character specific ones just change character to character. And these are the ones that have a major impact. So for Iron Giant here, uh, we have Afterburners. If you do his flame attack with his uh, rocket thrusters, it leaves an actual DOT firewall after the fact. This guy here, Static Discharge, can give him Stacks of Thorns. That's another kind of buff where the enemy takes damage for hitting you. So it basically lets him do more damage to the enemy passively. Or the wrong side of the bed where he just starts and spawns with part of his Rage Gauge already filled up so he can go into his ultimate quicker. Every character has the ability to have the generic passives and every character has at least three major passives that are unique to the character and can wildly change how they play. So just keep that in mind. Now, the big thing, the final thing to mention here is this is fundamentally designed to be a two versus two game. Now, yes, you can play four player free for all if you want. You can play one on one if you want. But a lot of just the core design is two versus two to the point where many characters have moves that interact with their teammates. So Wonder Woman, if I lasso the enemy, they get hit. Sure enough, right? But if I were to lasso my teammate, they get brought in and they also get an armor buff. So I have a benefit for hitting the enemy or hitting my teammate. Much the same, say the shield, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is definitely a team player character. If I hit the enemy, or rather hit my partner with the shield, they get an armor buff for a split second. I have a move just down a special and it gives me armor. But if I'm somewhat near my ally, it'll teleport me to my ally and give them armor as well, right? So, so much of what I can do can also benefit my ally and that's very much intended. Iron Giant, whenever I activate my shield, my ally gets a buff. They'll get the thorns buff, so whenever someone hits my ally, they'll take a little bit of damage. So I get my bonus, but just by activating my bonus even far away, my ally also gets a bonus. Someone like Grindog can tether the uh, opponent, and along the tether too, it'll deal damage to the enemy the whole time, that's good. And you can call it in and just rip them right to you. So while you have the tether up, say they're accidentally going over the edge, you can just activate and bring them away from the edge to save them. Steven Universe has a projectile that creates a shield, and if it uh, hits along the AOA, it'll just pop the enemy. And if you hit it on your teammate, they get armor, right? And in a good example for someone who's just designed for team play, so his basic role, if you do it neutrally, it's a shield. And while he has a shield up, your partner also has a shield. Now you are stuck in place. Your partner, though, is not. They can move around freely. So I can just be holding the shield up and Iron Giant here, he can just start going crazy knowing I got his back because as long as I'm doing my shield, he has a shield as well. So teammates, synergy, characters working well together, all this stuff is a big, 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 big deal. Characters work well together. They give each other's buffs. There's perks that help other uh, characters and there's synergy. It's all about 2v2 in the end. Feel free to play whatever mode you like, but keep in mind just 2v2 is where a lot of the ideas are designed. And it's to absolutely the game's benefit, in my opinion, as things are just pretty cool that way. And that, my friends, is the beginner's guide to multiverses. So hopefully I covered enough uh, aspects of the game to help you understand how everything works. There's still even so much more under the hood to talk about, but perhaps we'll save that for another day. But this is the basics of the game and should help you understand just how everything works. For my money, I'm not honestly much more of a platform fighter player, right? I prefer more traditional fighting games like your Street Fighters, your Mortal Kombats, compared to your Smash Brothers style games. But this game, I like. Maybe because it's the 2v2 mode, maybe because it's very frenetic. Uh, once again, there's no blocking, right? So uh, there's a lot of hits in this game that come quick and fast. There's no stalling out. You've got to take out the enemy before they take you out kind of deal. Very savage like that. I like that. But I dig this game, and I hope everything in this guide has helped you out so you can enjoy it as well. So that all said, this is the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well and go out and play some multiverses.